So let's go over a little topic that may give you a small headache, but I'm going to swear to you it's nothing too spooky or awful. So this is where you're going to be using the enthalpies of formation, the delta HF, to calculate the enthalpies of reaction. So this is for anybody interested or for Chem 204, uh, Gen Chem 1's Chapter 5. So a typical problem you're going to see is given the data below, calculate the delta H reaction for the reaction provided. So they give you a reaction, and then they say the delta H of reaction equals what, right? So they give me this big old reaction. And then they give me these knowns. You'll find that a lot of these are in the table in the back, right? but for an exam, they'll probably give them to you, but these are absolutely known enthalpies of formation. So, one thing to do, one thing that's kind of tricky, is make sure that the numbers that you're using have the same states of, uh, states of matter, right? So, for water, we could have a liquid, gas, or solid, and in this case, they're both liquid, so good but you may have a situation where they try to trick you and give you many different, like aqueous versus liquid versus gas, right? So make sure that they're in the same state of matter, but in this case, they are. Um, another thing to note is here we have the equation, and I put it on the bottom here because, you know, I thought about it lastly, but the enthalpy of the reaction is the summation of the moles times the enthalpy of formation of all the products minus the summation of the moles times the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. Woo! That sounds like a lot. It really isn't. So that just means the products are going to be our positives. These are going to be minuses. So it's essentially this side minus this side. Right side minus left side. And the M and the N will go over that. So I'm going to pull out another piece of paper because I think it would just be easier to do this. So I'm going to figure out how to get this right here. Perfect. So I'm going to have to have my products minus reactants, right? The summation of my products minus my reactants. So what are my products? Products are on the right-hand side, right? So it's going to be N, it's times the number of moles, because if you notice, this is kilojoule per mole. So I have my calcium, um, I think this is arsenic, uh, like arsenate, arsenic acid. So my calcium compound right here, and if I look at my table, I actually have its enthalpy of formation. So I'm going to say that it's this is on the right-hand side, so I'm going to total up all my right-hand side, which is my products, minus total up all your left-hand side, which is your reactants. My brain kind of just turned to mush just now. And you make sure that you multiply by moles in between. So let's go ahead and do that. So the coefficient here is 1, so I'm going to multiply this number by 1 which isn't anything, right? So it's essentially going to be 1 mole times negative 2, 3, 4, 6 point zero kilojoule per mole. Now I'm going to rewrite this, but I did this just so that you can see why I insist on writing the mole first and the mole here. Because when the moles cancel out, I'm going to be left with kilojoules, right? So I'm going to do this the abbreviated way. It's essentially 1 times negative 2, 3, 4, 6 uh, kilojoules plus, right, the summation of the right-hand side. Now what else do we have on the right-hand side? We have two waters, so plus 2 times, and what do we have for water? Water is negative 285, so negative 285 and 0 kilojoules, right? That's my right-hand side, minus, now, 
let's go ahead and this one is really hard to navigate apparently my left hand side I'm gonna have one of the calcium hydroxides because that coefficient in front of it is one so one minus one times negative 986.6 plus two of this arsenic acid, right? Two of these. Negative 900.4. Now you notice I kind of stopped writing the kilojoules here because they're all going to be in kilojoules. I know my answer is going to be in kilojoules. So I do find it easier if you just kind of, I like to do it kind of piecemeal so that I don't get confused and mixed up. So I'm going to try to take care of my products first and then my reactants. So negative 2, 3, 4, 6, and then it's going to be minus whatever 2 times 285.0 is. So the right side is negative 2916 kilojoules. It's right side minus the left side. So what is my, what's on my left side? It's going to be negative 986.6 minus whatever 2 times 900.4 is. So the right side is negative 2787.4 kilojoules, right? I said negative. So this is going to be essentially adding, right? So it's going to be 2, not, er, sorry, sorry, sorry negative 2916 minus a negative 2787.4 or you could have typed plus wouldn't matter right so I get negative 128.6 and the unit is kilojoules why because as I showed us earlier the coefficients mean moles and these um, given enthalpies of formation are in kilojoule per mole. So you essentially took care of the mole part by multiplying by the coefficients in the equation. So that is how you use enthalpy of formation. So if you do have further questions about enthalpy of formation or what it really means, definitely take a look in the book and um, it's good to know when an enthalpy of formation is expected to be zero because that means that it's in its elemental form and how it exists naturally. So that's a really good thing to figure out. Good luck, everyone.